dear listeners today we will be talking about society and environment and i am dr reema bhatia from miranda house university of delhi when we talk about our society and our environment what do we mean about it when we talk about the environment we refer to all that surrounds us we are talking about all that influences us we talk about how is it that the environment is something which acts as a stimulus for us right so the environment in short consists of your physical environment your biological environment and your social environment the physical environment consists of our geographical and climatic environment the physical environment actually means all that nature provides for man so that means it will include land it will include water it will include mountains it will include the plains it will include rivers it will also be determined by where is it that you live so for example if you live in an area in which there is a desert climate so obviously there will be a low density of population low density of population meaning that the number of people living in that area is going to be low as far as their means of livelihood is concerned obviously it will not be something which is based on agriculture since obviously growing crops in such a climate becomes very very difficult similarly if you are living in the mountain areas again even though the temperatures are not as high as you find in the deserts but nevertheless the extremes of temperature are still to be found in the mountainous areas so again you will have a low density of population the mountainous area could also be a desert climate where again you will find a very low or a scanty rainfall and again agriculture becomes a problem so again the density of population is going to be very low as opposed to that if you talk about plains in the plains agriculture is possible the extremes of climate are not so very much so you will find a very high density of population now high density of population would also mean that as far as the lifestyles of the people are concerned the kind of occupations that they are engaged in the kind of livelihood that they are engaged in all of that is going to be very very different and as we will see further along the present uh, along the presentation and the discussion this will also have an impact on the level of development of that particular economy the level of development of that particular society which in turn will impact the environmental condition of that particular uh, area right now when we talk about the biological environment by the biological environment you mean all that surrounds us in terms of biology so it would include the life that you find in the seas it will include forests it will include mountains the oceans it will include all the natural you know animals that you find in their natural habitat plus also birds so in short when you talk about the biological environment you mean all all plant forms all life forms that surround us right now coming to the social environment the social environment it will economic as well as cultural and social aspects now when i'm talking about the social environment please also remember that the social environment is also interlinked with the other two forms of uh, environment that we have discussed that is the physical as well as environment but we'll come to that in a little while now when you talk about the economic environment you are obviously talking about the kind of economy that particular society has so that means you will be talking about the level of development you will be talking about the kind of houses that you have you will be talking about the kind of manufacturing that takes place right you will also be talking about the manner in which we exchange you will talk about the manner in which there is a distribution of goods and also the consumption of wealth right now when you talk about the cultural and the social environment as students of sociology and society you already know that the cultural and the social environment will include all ways of life right so that means it will include your customs it will include your traditions it will include religion it will include laws it will in short include the way that you think it will include the way that you interact with one another right so and uh, please also remember when you are talking about the cultural and the social environment it is also linked to the economic environment the physical and the biological environment right and which in turn will be linked to the level of development of each society right now broadly speaking as sociologists in terms of development we classify societies into hunting and gathering societies into pastoral societies agricultural and industrial societies now you could very well ask that why are we talking about the different kinds of societies if we are talking about the economy and the environment right or sorry if you are talking about 
the society and the environment. Now, the reason why we talk about this is because in the very beginning, I did tell you that the interaction of man with the environment is also influenced by the level of development, economic development of that particular society, right? So, for example, if you're talking about a hunting and a gathering society, you're obviously talking about a society which is at a lower level of development. You're talking about a society which is basically based on hunting of animals and gathering of wild fruits and vegetables. So, obviously, you'll also be talking about a society in which there is a very simple division of labor based on age and sex and it's a subsistence economy, right? Now, when you talk about a pastoral economy, on the other hand, a pastoral economy is slightly more developed than the hunting and a gathering economy because in a hunting and a gathering economy, you are obviously not settled. Now, in a pastoral economy, on the other hand, you are now beginning to talk about domestication of animals, right? You are talking about an economy in which there is also some form of agriculture which might be developing, but the kind of agriculture that one is talking about is again, you know, more of a shifting kind of an agriculture. So, a pastoral economy, you are talking about domestication of plants, you are talking about domestication of animals as well, right? Now, when you talk about an agricultural economy, on the other hand, you are talking about a more settled way of life. You are talking about a level of economic development in which people are more settled. And please remember, we began by talking about the physical, the uh, economic and the social and cultural environment, right? So, in these kind of societies, what you see is that in, a, in an agricultural economy, people are more settled. They may, ha they may start having uh, permanent houses. You will also find that there is also the production of a surplus, right? Hunting and a gathering, I said, was a subsistence economy. A pastoral economy is one level up than a hunting and a gathering economy. But nevertheless, you know, surplus that is being produced is not too much. In an agricultural economy, on the other hand, you are talking about a more settled way of life and of course, domestication of animals is also there, there and you might also find the beginnings of some form of a exchange, the kind that you are familiar with in the kind of societies that you live in, right? Now, at the highest level of development, you will have an industrial economy and in an industrial economy, you are obviously talking about an economy in which there is machine based production and there is by and large people living in the urban areas. Right? And as the photographs show you, you are also looking at how is it that there is a higher level of pollution because you are using more and more technology. And in an industrial economy, it does not mean that agriculture stops. Of course not. Instead, what might happen is that agriculture also becomes industrialized. I am sure you have heard of cash crops, you have heard of mechanization of agriculture, you have heard of the green revolution. Right? So, you are talking about an economy in which there is the onset of machine based production for agriculture as well as for goods and services. As far as the impact of development of societies is concerned, now uh, you see when I am talking about the impact of development of societies, I am talking about the impact of development of societies in terms of you know pollution for example. The photograph shows you, this is a photograph of Delhi which shows you how very polluted the air is. So, you are talking about the impact of development in terms of air pollution, in terms of water pollution, in terms of mountain pollution. This photograph actually shows the Mount Everest littered with all kinds of debris. You are also talking about pollution which is occurring because of the kind of plastic that is being generated. So, that means what we are talking about is how is it that the level of development of a particular society, you began with a hunting and a gathering society and you moved on to a pastoral, agricultural and then an industrial society. And what you have seen is that as the level of, as societies develop economically, right? Economic, economic development is also something, please remember, which is also linked to your way of life. It is also linked to the other aspects of your life. That means, Economic development cannot be looked at independent of your social and cultural development, right? So, when you are talking about pollution, you are obviously talking about the use of, you know, you are also talking about how is it that your way of life is now being influenced by your level of development, which in turn is influencing the environment, right? So, that means you are now talking about how is it that 
life has an impact on the environment that you live in. And we began by saying that the environment is something which surrounds us completely. And we said it includes your physical aspects as well as your social and cultural aspects. And these photographs show you that what has been the impact of development. Right? Now, when one talks about this kind of a, uh, impact of development, the world as a whole started talking about sustainable development. The question that next arises is that what do you mean by sustainability? Right? Now, you talk, when you talk about sustainability, basically what you are saying here is that you have to recognize that the way of life which human beings follow, the way of life which man follows has to be one in which you are able to sustain your level of development without harming the environment, right? That means you begin to recognize that the economy exists within a particular environment and you have to recognize that the economy, society and environment are all a part of your development and you have to make sure that all three of these aspects are in sync with one another. Now when I say that all parts of these and of uh, the economy, society and environment have to be in sync with one, with one another, what does it mean? What it simply means is that, for example, if you're talking about economic development, you're talking about using a kind of a technology, right? So what it would imply is that you as so you as members of society begin to use a kind of technology which does not harm your environment harm your environment. So for example, say for instance, you could talk about uh, you know using fuels which are not fossil fuels. For example, you could talk about using compressed natural gas, you could talk about using wind energy. Right? You could talk about, uh, you know, about harnessing, let's say, the solar energy. So those are ways in which there is sustainability. Right? Now, sustainability of an environment, sustainability in, uh, in terms of economic development is only possible if one ensures that there is an equitable level of development across board. Now, when I say equitable level of development across board, what does this mean? What it simply means is that you have to take care that, uh, you know, that there is an, uh, there is an, for example, an even distribution of population. Um, now, how does that impact us? Okay, look at it this way. You are talking about an increase in human population. An increase in human population would mean that there is going to be an over-exploitation of resources that you need. Over-exploitation of fuel, over-exploitation of fodder, over-exploitation of shelter. For example, one of the reasons one of the reasons that is often given is that why is there so much pollution in Delhi? The argument that is often uh, put forth is that it is so very uh, polluted because of the fact that there is there are an increasing number of cars on Delhi's roads, right? Now, when you say there is an increasing number of cars on Delhi's roads, it obviously means that there is a high density of population. Now, why is there a high density of population? There is a high density of population in Delhi, for instance. Why? Because what's happening is Delhi is a place where there is a lot of economic opportunities available to people. If there is a lot of economic opportunities available to people in Delhi, that means that areas which surround Delhi do not have as many economic opportunities. Therefore, people will migrate from surrounding areas to Delhi in order to ensure that they are able to maintain a reasonable level of development in order to ensure that they are able to earn their livelihoods and all of that is going to put a strain on your environment right so keeping this in mind you have to understand that sustainability is something which is because of over exploitation in terms of fishing agriculture overuse of fresh water deforestation you're talking about industrialization right you're also talking about soil degradation you're talking about climate change you're talking about the impact on the health of people, you are also talking about poverty and income inequality as well. So that means in order to attain a sustainable level of development, it is extremely important for the government to have certain institutional mechanisms in place. Right? Now when you talk about an institutional mechanism, what does that mean? An institutional mechanism means that the government should have certain uh, laws in place, it should have certain regulations in place, certain norms in place in which it ensures that there is, for instance, 
an equal level of development in the rural areas, in the urban areas, as well as in terms of the industry. I just a short while ago, I just gave you an example of how is it that people are migrating to Delhi. Now, why is it that people are migrating to Delhi? People are migrating to Delhi because of an inequitable level of development, say for example, in the rural areas. So, for instance, if there is going to be, you know, the surrounding urban areas are not so very well developed, it is but natural that people will migrate to Delhi. Right? And when I am talking about not well developed, I do not just simply mean in terms of livelihood. I also mean it in terms of, you know, infrastructure development. I also mean it in terms of, um, you know, health. I also mean it in terms of uh, schools that are available. I also mean it in terms of social security. So that means when you are talking about an equitable level of development in terms of sustainability, that means you have to ensure that people, you know, people all around, people in your country, people in the world as a whole, for instance, are healthy. You have to ensure that there is employment for them. You have to ensure that as far as the vulnerable sections of population are concerned, they have social security. There are educational uh, facilities that are available to all sections of society. So that means when you are talking about, and all of this is going to have an impact on your environment, right? Now, it is going to have an impact on land, it is going to have an impact on water, energy, you know, in terms of environmental awareness and also in terms of, you know, science and technology. Now, you see, so that means what are we saying? What we are basically saying is by ensuring a certain level of economic development, you are going to ensure a certain way of life, which means a certain level of social development, social and cultural development, which in turn is going to have an impact on your environment. And when I talk about the environment, I'm talking about the physical environment, which includes your land and water. I'm also talking about the biological environment, which means, you know, the plants, the animals, the birds that surround us. I'm also talking about the, the kind of science and technology that you are using. So that means when the world as a whole started talking about sustainable development, they started saying that what we need to do is we need to ensure that there is a certain level of sustainable development. And as a first step towards that, you know, we started talking about this as early as 1945. And, and this is 2019, right? So, so many years back, we started talking about it for the first time. 19 this amazing thing called the Club of Rome, where for the first time they started talking about, look, we need to look after our environment in the world as a whole. And, you know, the Club of Rome 1968, if I remember correctly, finally led to the Stockholm Conference, which happened in 1972. And in the Stockholm Conference, one basically talk, started talking about, you know, the world as a whole got together and the United Nations saying that what we need to do is we need to chart out a, an action plan in which we are going to look after our environment, we are going to assess the damage that we have done to our environment and we will start seeing how is it that we can look after our environment, right? Now, the Stockholm conference was not just the only thing that happened. After the Stockholm conference, you also had something called the Brundtland Commission report. Now, this came in in 1983 and as the photograph shows you, you know, you start talking about our common future. And in the Commission, you started saying, that look, what we need to do is we have to ensure that just because we're talking about sustainability, just because we're talking about protecting our environment does not mean that we start compromising on the kind of technology that you that we use. You see, because the basic argument that one gives is, all right, if the kind of technology that we are using, if industrialization, for instance, the kind of technology that we are using in our industries, if that is bad for the environment, then let's stop talking about industrialization. But no, that is not the answer. Instead, you need to come up with alternatives, right? So the Brundtland Commission report is saying that, look, we cannot talk about compromise the quality of our lives, right? We have to make sure that we maintain a certain level of development and we are able to sustain the needs of generation as well. So that means now we started talking about needs. We started talking about not just the need of this generation, but also the needs of the future generations that let us have enough for our future generations. Now, this was again then followed up by the Rio summit in 1992, where, you know, you start, where the same kind of a discussion was carried forward. 
and you started saying that there has to be an equal concentration of the uh, environment, concentration in terms of development of the environment, society and economy. We also have to ensure that we are able to maintain the look after the needs of our future generation. So, they came up with something called the agenda 21 that means this is what we are this is how we are going to maintain a sustainable develop, level of development in the 21st century right. And there was a global consensus, there was a political commitment and you also started involving the non-governmental organizations that is the NGOs and you started figuring out how is it that we are going to be ensuring that we look after our environment while ensuring a certain level of development. Now this shows you a certain kind of a timeline of the various conferences that have been held at different points of time and if you take in 2000 for instance you had one of the largest ever gatherings in the world and you started saying all right we are now going to set targets for ourselves. Now these were called the MDGs. I am sure you have heard of the MDGs which actually means the Millennium Development Goals. And you started saying that we are going to be talking about, you know, we are going to be talking about looking after. So you had something like, you know, eight goals. You said we will eradicate hunger, we will, er we will look after education, we will look after maternal mortality, uh, maternal mortality rates, we will make sure that our population has enough drinking water, we will start using more environmental friendly technology, you know and our goal has to be a global partnership for all. Now an offshoot of all of this is that uh, please remember that India also is a part of the United Nations. So all that we are talking about in the context of the United Nations also had an impact on India, right. So for example, India started working towards, you know, universal education. I am sure you have heard of the Sarf Siksha Abhiyan, right. I am sure you have heard of uh, the national health missions. Now what are all of these? These are all in response to the goals and targets which were set by the United Nations. I am sure you have also heard of the National Rural Employment Generation Schemes, right? So you have the Nareka schemes. All of those are, you know, attempts of the government to ensure equitable development, ensure that we, we are able to develop in a sustainable way without damaging the environment. And in fact, in terms of the MDGs, what you have is that we are supposed to achieve the targets by 2015 but one of the targets that we managed to achieve by 2009 was that we were able to ensure that at least uh, you know the target that we had for providing safe drinking water. By 2009 the, uh, the number of people who did not have access to safe drinking water was reduced by half right. Now a review of the was done and uh, we did then, you know, then the world as a whole it, through the United Nations came up with something called the Sustainable Development Goals which replaced the MDGs and we came up with the SDGs as they are called in 2016. Now the SDGs have something like 17 goals and they are carrying forward the agenda of the MDGs, right. You are still talking about poverty eradication, you are talking about hunger reduction, you are talking about gender equality, you are talking about you know protecting the water. Protect, talking about protecting the air, etc., etc. In short, you are talking about ensuring that our environment is safe, right? So that means, dear listeners, what we have been talking about today is that how is it that there is a very complex relationship between man and nature? How is it that uh, when when we talk about man, we are not just talking about uh, you know uh, men as biological beings? Instead, we are talking about men in terms of how they exist in this earth, on this earth. We are talking about a certain level of economic development, physical development and social development. So that means in short, we are talking about sustainable development. So today when we talk about the environment and society, we are talking about a sustainable level of development. We are talking about developing without harming the environment. We are talking about ensuring that the needs of all individuals are met and we are also able to protect and preserve our environment for the future generations. Thank you.